Hello, and welcome to the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. Each episode, we talk about a particular topic in the life of a professor. We are tenure-track faculty members in the sciences, working at a primarily undergraduate university in California. The purpose of our podcast is reflection, so we bring something we think is working and something we're working on to discuss. Welcome to the Professor Podcast. I'm Claire. And I'm Blaze. And today we're going to talk about deep work. But first, Blaze, how was your week? My week's going great. Um, as we were just talking about before the show, I, I've had a pet turtle ever since childhood who lives outside in the summer. And it's becoming winter here, and he's just moved inside. So for the past week, I've newly gotten to enjoy watching him in his indoor tank, where I see him much more often, frankly, than when he's in a <laughs> pond in the summer. He likes to hide. That's so fun. He's a riot. In the, but he's, in the summertime, is he like just underwater further than you can see him? I or? think in the summer, he, he likes to uh, make pretend that he's a little wild. So <laughs> he'll he'll go underwater and pretend that he doesn't like being seen, but if you take a, a fresh worm or something, he'll still eat it out of your hand. So <laughs> he's just a big softy at, at his heart. Yeah. That sounds super fun. I can kind of see him swimming around back there. How was your week? It was good. Uh, one thing that I did yesterday was I was like, I want to have my own Spotify playlist with just my liked songs. And um, so that... I can. I'm sure that most people um, have their music more organized than I do. But I just so yesterday I was like, you know, it'd be fun is if I could just go to a spot and have a bunch of songs that I like. And so I started just throwing songs on this Spotify playlist, and it was really cool. I was like going down memory lane, like all the way back to okay, high school. What songs did I like? Okay, what about in college? And um, so that was really fun. So now I have a Spotify playlist full of songs that I like, but I'm also kind of sick of them all because I listened to it a lot yesterday. How many songs? <laughs> Like um, that's 10, a good question. 100, one. Um, I think <laughs> I think it's somewhere in the dozens. Um, but I've, I'm not quite sure because I've just been kind of like quickly throwing them on there, and then if they come up and I don't, I'm not excited mm. when they come on, then I quickly take them off. So I'm trying to like just refine a lot. Um, but yeah. So I need to take a break from my Spotify playlist, but I think it'll be fun. <laughs> it's like setting a, a song you really love as your alarm ringtone. Exactly. Yeah, that doesn't work. It's amazing. It's like two days later, not even a week or a month, <laughs> or like literally the next day, you're just like, I hate this song. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Oh, Songs are weird in that way. Mm -hmm. The freshness mm -hmm. to them that don't really understand. I agree. So you have a quote, I believe. I do. So it's from Ryan Holiday, who's an author and the host of the podcast, The Daily Stoic. And so anyway, here's his quote. When I pull up my phone, click the day's date and see too many little boxes of time blocked off, I get very nervous. What is all this? Where did all my time go? What about my day? Why did I agree to do any of this again? The answer is usually because it was really far away and I thought it would magically work itself out. And then the most fearful question, how will I be able to write? I want two or three things there at most. The rest is for me. The rest is not allowed to be scheduled. And if it is scheduled, it better be because I'm getting paid or I really, really wanted to do it. Everything else is for suckers. So anyway, I just love his dramatic uh, oh, it's, it's, purging of his calendar. That is way too real. Um, yes. Way too real. And I I think during um, COVID times and there's some construction issues that are also affecting my job on top of COVID, it's mm -hmm. just to the max because, you know, it, it's, I get that there's a spontaneity to working together and there's interruptions in that way. But mm -hmm. somehow the idea that everyone you need to interact with at all today needs to have an event on my calendar 
Mm. And yeah. a setup time on the computer and for me mm-hmm. perhaps a walk across campus. The the relentless tyranny of the to-do list <laughs> is just um it it burns me out, honestly. <laughs> it's terrible. The tyranny Great. of the to-do list. Quote. Which is of course related to deep work. Yeah. So you suggest the deep work. I've been thinking a lot about this. What does deep work mean to you? Um, well, deep work is a it's a book on my bookshelf. First of all, I guess mm-hmm. it's um, by Cal Newport, um, who's written a few books that I like. But um, basically, Cal Newport distinguishes between shallow work which is repetitive, done in a distracted state, um, often deals with logistics and administration versus deep work where one is um, really making something new, working creatively on a, a topic that isn't easy for that person and um, it requires uh, a focus and a uh, lack of distraction. I guess that's mm-hmm. two sides of the same coin. So, yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about today because I need some help. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I think this is something I'm always... I'm always working on. Yeah. But let's start with what's working. So so what's what's working for you with deep work? Surprisingly, I, I'm going to say that carving out time is what's working for me. At least I think so. Mm-hmm. Um, I've gotten to a point in my professional life where I'm not afraid of scheduling time blocks for me to focus and I'm not afraid of pushing off small tasks into the future if I already have enough small tasks and the dirty little secret is a lot of times the small tasks go away (laughs) if if you say they're going to come back in a week they actually don't Um, nice so yeah, I. if you look at my calendar, you would think that I'm getting a lot of time to focus and make a lot of progress on my most ambitious projects. Mm-hmm. Um, but since the beginning of the semester, it's beginning of October now, uh, I have not found myself making a lot of progress. I guess that's my working on. So you're doing a great job of putting it on your calendar and pushing off the small tasks mm-hmm. and not letting them take up time, but somehow it's still, there's something else that you need to work on, which we'll talk about. Which is huge because I, I guess I should be positive. I didn't used to have time on my calendar for personal work, quiet that is work. Huge. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, and it, you're also right. It's super. It takes a lot of confidence mm-hmm. to put off to say I'm not going to take, I'm not going to let these bunch of small tasks take over this time that I actually need to do this bigger task. Mm-hmm. So that's fantastic. Yeah. What about you working on? Yeah. So let's see. For? So I said I said I've been thinking a lot about deep work, and that's kind of because on Monday there were two things I wanted to do. I wanted to write my exam. And I wanted to edit a podcast episode. And I spent the whole day busily running around doing all kinds of things, but didn't <laughs> even start either of those things. So oh it was goodness. one of those days. This is such an aside. But do okay. you do the thing <laughs> where you're like, okay, I've got my four hours for this task. Uh-huh. But first, it's always <laughs> the but first, right? It's, it's um, you know... Things would be so much smoother if this email was sent as soon mm-hmm. as possible. 
Or right. if I put in this order for parts as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. Then it could be working for me while I focus on the main thing that I need and to get it, to. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's five o'clock. Um, exactly. So th- that was uh, your previous Monday here? Yeah. That was my last Monday, exactly. So I... Uh, then I spent the rest of the week trying to think about deep work and intentionality and essentialism and all that. So I kind of um, got a little bit better throughout the week, and I kind of thought of a few things that I think are working for me for uh, doing the thing I want to do. And I've talked about this one a lot before, the highlight, which can be of the day. We often uh, That's often the context, I think of it as. Highlight of the day, like what's the one thing that I actually am going to be focusing on throughout the day? Let's decide it explicitly to myself, and I know that that's the thing that I'm going to work on, and that's the thing. You know, I might have other things that I have to do that day, too, but I'm coming back to that thing, and and at the end of the day, if I've worked on that thing, it's been successful. Um, And I also want to, so it could be highlight of the day, but also sometimes highlight until done, Mm -hmm. if it's something that might take a few days. So like like grading the exam that I was trying to write on Monday uh, takes a few days, and it was really helpful So in the second half of the week, I felt like I did much better with deep work. That was my thing. I was grading the exam, and it was going to take a few days having that be my highlight, but I did it until done, and um, that worked really well. Um, So having a highlight and being really explicit about that, and also, relatedly, I've been super excited lately about doing things to finish them. And so, like, midway through grading this exam, I hit some sticky part and was like, this is hard. I don't know how to grade this question. Oh, maybe I'll switch and review this NSF proposal that I've been meaning to do instead. But then the problem is then I'll have two half-done active things, and probably they're both stopped at a hard part, and um, so that's really not ideal. And that's not to say that, you know, I think it's okay intentionally to switch from one thing to another, but not just because I ran into a hard part or... um, Yes. Yeah. So... So anyway, I, I, I didn't switch to the NSF proposal. I finished the exam. The exam's now done, and now I can pick the next thing. And so I, I, I feel like that has worked really well. Yes. And also, I'll just throw in being excited about the thing I'm doing, because it's so easy to be like, yes. oh, but there's all these 25 other things I want to do. But I am actually excited about the thing I'm doing, even if sometimes it might just be getting it done is the exciting thing. But hopefully there's something else. But just remembering that I am excited about the thing I'm working on and not all the other things I could be working on, you know? I, that segues well into my, my working on, because I I think that's my point of failure is I I get into a scarcity mindset and a Mm lose-lose mindset. Yeah. And... It paralyzes me. And I think that's at least part of the problem. I think there's all types of ways to think about it. But um, I really do feel myself getting burnt out because when I try to engage with my like personal organization system, it feels like looking into the void of infinite tasks that will never all be done. And therefore, even if I'm as productive as possible, I'm still going to lose because I get one thing (laughs) done and I get quote unquote behind on nine other things. Mm -hmm. Right. So what do I do instead is I do logistics and administration and emails and the the billion other things that are I, I just I don't even know how to think about those things because they're they're productive mm-hmm. but they're also just expansive in a weird way that doesn't make much sense. Cause I feel like I could, I could probably be equally effective in doing them if I spent a quarter as much time on them. I just mm-hmm. let them expand. Yeah. They are really interesting. Cause a lot of them do need to be done, but 
the amount of time they can take up is disproportionate to their value or something like that, you know? Yeah. But it's, it's that I, what I wrote down here under working on is just the word scarcity. I I think Mm -hmm. it's really an emotional barrier for me at the moment. Um, And it's about failing to be excited as possible about um, yeah, excited. My, I agree. My task at hand. I have um, this note that I wrote myself that says, there is an abundance of time, mm-hmm. and I've put it where I can <laughs> see it, to remind myself not to have the scarcity mindset. It's yeah. so easy to have a scarcity mindset. But um, we have the same amount of time yeah. as anybody else does, and we get to choose which one, which thing we're going to work on. And... Um, there's one thing I've noticed is there's this like toxic situation where you have lots of, I have lots of deep projects that are engaging with lots of different people mm-hmm. who all know about me and my work, but they don't really interact with each other. And mm-hmm. none of them even know that I'm also working with person of course. X. Mm-hmm. And that's a really hard situation for me because it's like I'm going to feel bad as if I ignored nine of the people I'm working with either way. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, that seems like... I totally relate with that. Surely, at least conceptually, intellectually, we can understand yes. that they all have equally number of the people they're yes. working with and equally number of projects they're working on. And they must understand that we do too. And so it's okay that we're not treating them all as the one and only project. Everyone is um, but really I do know what you mean. nice and um, totally gets it. And I'm not... Mm-hmm. I should count myself lucky because I know that some people really do exist in um, very toxic work environments where the expectations Mm -hmm. placed on them are actually unreasonable. But um, just, yeah, just the situation is, has been challenging for me. Mm -hmm. There's, Mm -hmm. um, I remember back when I was a grad student, I used to, about two times a year, just um, kind of get bored of whatever to-do tracking system I was using Mm -hmm. and just like try out a new app or like a Mm -hmm. new system, whether it was, oh, I'm going to try out bullet journaling, this fully paper-based system, or I'm going to try out this Todoist app or whatever. And I used to feel like, gosh, I'm such a dummy. I'm just (laughs) spinning my wheels. But, you know, sometimes I think there was like a deep wisdom to that practice. (laughs) Because actually seeing to-dos that I actually wrote in 2018, which is Uh something I do, is deeply demotivating, I think. Um, wait, 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 wait. Because what was the last part? I, I I have now gotten to a point where I'm stable over the last few mm-hmm. years, and I'm just I've been using one to do system for years and uh-huh. years now, and it feels worse because I have to dos that are still oh. undone from years ago. I see. <laughs> and that build up I think contributes to the scarcity mindset cuz mm-hmm. I'm feeling mm-hmm. more and more and more like like I feel like my to-do system has 10 years worth of work written in it. Mhm. Mhm. Assuming I don't get anything else that I want to do, you know, (laughs) in the next 10 years, uh, should be 
I've already remarked that <laughs> if I show up to work on Monday and I don't get more to do's, that would be a pretty remarkable day. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I wonder. I totally relate. This is super relatable. Um, Ralph had a system for a while where every week he like revised his to do list, and if something had been postponed <laughs> to the next week yeah. twice, it just got removed. Yeah, like we're not going to do that task, and if it comes up again. It can go back on the to-do list. I kind of like that system of, like, if I'm postponing it too long, maybe it should just go off the list, and next time it becomes relevant, I'll put it back on. You know, like this 2018 thing that was on your to-do, maybe maybe it doesn't need to be done, or at least it's worth considering. It's like I've literally it I've snoozed that task <laughs> to next week. What? <laughs> 300 times now? And so in each one of those now? next weeks, <laughs> you've never... <laughs> thought that it was yeah. the thing to do that week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but when you look at, when, when, when you put your cursor over that to-do item, you're like, yeah, that's, that's something I do want to do, <laughs> right? So it's like yeah, mm -hmm. marking it canceled. I don't know. Um, but it's not like you're saying you're never going to yeah, do yeah. it. You're just saying, I'm not going to be reminded next week. Next time you think of it and you're like, oh, yeah, that thing that I'm I gonna, wanted to do. Maybe then you do want to do it maybe that week. I'm going to file it back know. into messy, disorganized brain space. And if it comes back to me, it's like, yeah, if you love something, if you love a to-do, let it go. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and if it comes back, that it was truly something you cared about, I guess. Yeah, that's um, a concept. Anyway, because yeah, I, I mean, for me, it, it comes back. I mean, obviously, we're talking about essentialism yes. here. At least everything is essentialism through my lens. But it, I, I, I've given this example a million times, but I still love it. Of like, if it's ten minutes before your meeting and it takes ten minutes to get yes. there, it is yes. not possible to sit down and check your email and get to the meeting on time. You can do either one, but that was never a possibility. So you can't be mad at yourself for not doing both. You know, one thing that is, I think, unique about deep work that I kind of foolishly rail against is that <laughs> it's, it's just simply not that predictable how long it's going to take. When I'm, That's true. When I'm preparing a first draft of a paper, I, I, I often get myself in this trap where I'm like, okay, first draft of this paper is my task for this week, and mm -hmm. I'm going to start agreeing to do other things next week mm -hmm. as if the first draft of a paper is something that I can just choose to finish in a week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not possible. So um, I don't know. that. I think that's another thing that Cal articulates really well in the book is that tension between collaboration where there has to be scheduled things and deadlines mm -hmm. and because people are working on different parts of a project and it has to come together mm -hmm. but that's um that puts attention against real deep work that is mm -hmm. deeply creative and can't be um scheduled out because mm -hmm. it contains so many unknowns so it's, um, I don't know. I guess I sh I also shouldn't expect to just solve it because if I solved it and became <laughs> uber productive, then I guess my career would just be over. It's like the pinnacle. <laughs> you just right? would do everything. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I apologize for the kind of unstructured thoughts there, but what are you working no. on? No. Well, that's actually a great transition into what I'm working on. Um, so yeah, just like you're saying, it's essential really for deep work to be able to settle in and just kind of forget what time it is yes. um even knowing that you're gonna have to stop at two o'clock can be a pull from the deep work so i'm working on distractions yes. um and so some things that i'm doing to combat the problem of distractions um I'm trying to schedule my day with things in chunks, like I have class. That's obviously an interruption from whatever else I might do. I mean, class is very important, but it's, it's not whatever else I was doing that day. So I try to put office hours right after class. Yes. So it's like the same concept, you know? 
Um, or if I have a meeting at three and I'm going to schedule another meeting, well, let's try to put it right before or right after so that I, I have these blocks of time that I can hopefully just sink into whatever the deep work project is. Um, and then similarly, knowing the interruption is coming is kind of a it pulls me out of being able to focus on deep work and kind of makes me want to do the shallow work instead. So one thing I've been doing that I find kind of helpful is setting timers. So I, I can stop thinking about what time it is, even though I'm going to have to stop in 50 minutes. I know that I don't have to remember what time it is and I can just pay attention to what I'm trying to work on until I get interrupted by the timer. Um, yes. So those things are helpful, but yeah, the distractions are really, <laughs> are really distracting. Um, so I definitely yeah. relate to the feeling of it's 11 a.m. I'm teaching at one and I'm just not like it's it's remarkable how that two hour away event can pull you out. Mm -hmm. um, and you got to be ready at one o'clock. You got to be good to go in the right mindset yeah. to teach. So. So, so yeah, I mean, I find it helpful to be like, okay, well, how much time before one yes. do I need to like get in that mindset? And then I can maybe forget about it until that time when the timer goes off. Cause yeah, it's, it's totally. that anxiety that are you really prepared it's that mm -hmm. process running in the background? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think so, yeah. you, you've come across, I think that it's actually a recommendation in the book to, um, take your shallow tasks and group them together in the day. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Makes a well, lot like of sense. during office hours, when I could be interrupted at any minute, but I might have some time mm -hmm. between students, that's, that seems like the perfect time to do shallow tasks, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I'll respond to the emails, but I'm already jumping from email to email. So it's not mm -hmm. a big deal if I also mm -hmm. jump to a student mm -hmm. that comes in and then jump back mm -hmm. to email and then jump to another student. So. I love that. That works really well. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think this is probably an ongoing thing that we're both going to keep working on indefinitely, but <laughs> I assume that as we're practicing, we'll get better and we'll hit on more and more tools and, um, yeah, just more and more systems that work for us in the different scenarios that come up, you know? Yeah, yeah. The, the challenges are ongoing. Um, and I think I have a lot to learn from essentialism, because I think that secret that the shallow tasks are less important than you think they are mm -hmm. is, a, is another key to it. There's just all these mm -hmm. ideas that all come together in a really beautiful mm -hmm. way. But I agree completely. Yeah, thanks for the conversation. This has been centering for me. I feel more mm -hmm. motivated to to get excited about what I'm working on on Monday. <laughs> awesome. Me too. Thank you, Blake. Yeah, thanks, Claire. Thanks so much for joining us on the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. We're delighted to have you as a listener, and we would love to hear from you. And if you want to email us, our address is contactprofessorpodcast at gmail.com. We'd love to hear any of your suggestions for future shows or professor quotes that you might want to share with us, or even just things that have come up for you when you were listening to previous episodes. And if you've been enjoying the podcast, we would love if you would spread the word. So the best way to spread word is by telling people you know, if you think they should listen to it, or you can leave us a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.